Castle Academy, and today we're going to show you all how to castle in chess. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi everyone! So for today we prepared an interesting video and we're gonna explain to you how to castle in chess. So uh, as you uh, as you may know, uh, castling is possible with two pieces, with your king and with one of your rooks. Any other pieces can't castle. So uh, the main idea of castling is to put your king in safe. So take care about the king. Mostly in the opening, you try to castle and uh, like avoid mate too early in the game, maybe. So there are two types of uh, castling in chess. So you can castle to the king side, yeah, or we call this a short castling. Or you can also castle to the queen side. This one we call um, a long castling. So uh, as you can see, there are two squares at the king side between the king and the rook. So that's why this is a short castle. So how to castle? Tara, what do you think? Where should I move the king? To f1, one square, or g1? So I can move the king even for two squares. Well, when you castle the king on the king side, you move the king two squares to the right. So the king would land on g1 here. Yeah, and you see the rook automatically moves to f1. It's very important for you to start with moving the king. If uh, instead of the king you try to move the rook, it would be just a move. So no castle. You see the king doesn't get to g1. So that's why it's, it's also an important rule to keep in mind that you always to sh should start your castling with moving the king. So king jumps over the square, yeah, and you castle. Uh, the same happens if we want to castle to the queen side. Don't think that now you need to um, move your king too close to the rook. No, no matter if you castle to the king side, a short castle, or to the queen side, a long castle, you still move your king over one square. Yeah? Am I right, Tara? Should I move the king to c1? Yes, you should move the king to c1. And by the way, there's a couple of things about castling that I just wanted to mention briefly. So the first thing is that in castling, it's the only time in chess where you can move the king two squares. So apart from castling, you can only move the king one square. But when you decide to castle, you can move the king two squares. And the second thing I wanted to mention is that in castling, the king and the rook move at the same time. So the king goes two squares and the rook jumps over the king. And it's the only time in chess where you can move two pieces at the same time. Because according to the rules, you can only move one piece. But in castling, you move the king and the rook. And the third thing I wanted to mention is that when you castle, the rook jumps over the king. So it jumps over if the king goes to g1. You can see that the computer did that automatically. It We just went to g1 with our king and then the rook came over. So it comes directly next to the king. It doesn't come to e1 two squares away, but it would go to... F1. And the final thing I wanted to mention is that since we're playing chess online, the castling happens automatically. The king goes to g1, the rook comes to f1, it happens at the same time. But when you're castling over the board or you're playing an over the board tournament, you have to pick up the king first and then the rook. So you don't do both the both the things at the same time, but you pick up the king first, put him two squares, and then you bring the rook right next to the king. Yeah, that's correct. So never touch, never move two pieces at the same time, and never start with a rook, only with a king. Okay, so now I think we should say several words about the rules when you just can't castle. So, for instance, uh, if you want to castle, your king shouldn't make any moves before a castling. And also the rook you want to castle with uh, also shouldn't make any moves. So no moves for the king and for the rook. You also can't castle uh, when your king is in check. 
You can't castle if you have uh, one of the pieces between the king and the rook. And there are also some uh, rules that you should follow. Now we're going to show you examples uh, when exactly you can't or when you can castle. So let's go to the first one. Okay, so what uh, do you see on this position, Tara? So like maybe something wrong uh, with the white king? Uh, I think my king is... Oh, wait, is the king on D1? Doesn't it start on E1? So yeah. in, ca in castling, the king should always be on E1 because whenever the king is going to castle, it should have... It should have not made its first move. So when you want to castle, the king should not have moved at all. Yeah, of course. So that's why in this position, as you see, the white king has moved already. It's not possible for a white to castle at all. So no matter how white plays, even if the king uh, gets back to e1, black can castle without any problems. You see that both of the rooks are on a8 and h8, and the king is on e8. So black can castle, for instance, to the king's side. And now you see I try to castle, but I can't. So computer even doesn't let me to castle. Because even if you put the king back to e1, the castling is still not possible because it has moved. The same would happen, uh, I just want to give you an example, uh, if we move one of the rooks. So, for instance, let me make uh, a move with a black rook. Yeah, white still can move the king. And now, what do you think? Can I uh, castle to the king side? Can I uh, castle, uh, like, make a short castling? No, I can't, because this rook has moved, so this rook can't castle, even it, if it moves back. So, that's why in this position... Uh, Black can uh, castle only to the uh, queen side, yeah, along castling. So this is how it works. Yeah, so it's the first rule. Uh, the king and the rook shouldn't move before they castle. Yeah, that's absolutely right. If the king moved, then you can't castle at all. But the better thing ab about moving the rooks is if you move one of the rooks, you can still castle using the other rook. So if you don't mind, could you go back to, could you go back and move? Let's yeah. say, uh, so just imagine that the king was on the square E1. So mm -hmm. it was on the starting square and pretend that the king didn't move at all, even though we know, know that the king moved. Like a black king, yeah? Uh -huh. Yeah, like the black king. That's a good example. So let's say that black moves the rook on A8 to B8. So black moved a rook on one side. So can black still castle? What do you think, viewers at home? Which side can black castle to? Yeah, that's right. I know, I black know. Black can castle to the king's side because the rook, because the left side rook has already moved. And since it moved, you cannot castle on that side. So bad rook, you did a good job. You did a bad job, I mean. Mm -hmm. And the other rook didn't move at all. So it's the good rook. And because the rook has done so well, we can castle with that rook. That's right. Okay, so uh, I think now we can go to the next example when you can't castle in a castle. Uh, so what interesting, like, what details uh, do you see in this position? So, Tara, what do you think? Well, I noticed that the kings for white and black are in the starting positions. The rooks are also in the starting positions. And white can castle to either side here. But one thing that I do notice for black is that they have a rook, they have a knight on g8 which is blocking the king from castling to the right side. So the king can't castle on the right side because of the knight on g8, but it can still castle to the left side. Yeah, so white can castle to the king side, to the queen side, but uh, because of the knight, there is no short castle uh, for black. Uh, so that's why uh, only long castling in this position. Uh, for instance, if I uh, do the same for white, yeah, 
Now you see that situation has changed. Now white can't castle to the king side anymore because the knight is here. So white can castle to the queen side only. But black still has a possibility of castling to the king's side. Yeah, because the knight moved away. So now all the ways are open. Yeah, so you can choose to castle to the queen side or to castle to the king side. It's up to you. Right. Yeah. And now, viewers at home, I have a couple questions for you. So, how do you call the king castling to the right side of the board? So, I think I will Ilya? make a, an Ilya. arrow to help. Yulia, do you know the answer? Of course, it's a short castle. Yeah, and now I have another question for all of you at home. What is it called when the king castles to the left side of the board? Good, it's queenside castling. Nice yeah. job. Virtual high five. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's go to the next example. Okay, uh, in this example, for now, if it's white's turn to move, white can castle to the king side, to the queen side, black can do the same. But I want to explain one interesting rule to you. So that's why instead of castling, I'm going to start with this move, bishop to b5. So what happens on the chessboard? It looks like the black king is in check. The king is under attack. So you need to keep in mind uh, when the king is in check, you can't castle. Castle is not your defense from the check. You see, I try to castle, but the computer doesn't let me to do this, no matter if I want to castle to the king's side or to the queen's side. So what does it mean? It doesn't mean that if once you were checked, you can't castle at all. If you find a good way to defend your king, you can castle after. So in this position, I think this little pawn could help us. So Tara, what would you do with the pawn? So I would move it to c6 and say, sorry, bishop, not today. Can't check my king. Yeah, of course. I don't want to lose my bishop, so probably I'm going to move it away. So let me move it back to d3. And now when the king is not in check, you can castle and you can choose if you want to castle to the queen side a long castling or if you want to castle to the king side a short castling yeah so if you find a good defense from check you can castle of course if you're gonna choose to move your king somewhere you can forget about the castling so it's not possible anymore and of course you can't castle when your king is in check right that's absolutely correct yeah so uh, maybe we can go to the next example. Sure, that would be nice. Yeah. Okay, so you see, I have changed the position a little. We still have two bishops, yeah, for white and for black. And this rule maybe is a little bit more complicated. So uh, probably if you know some chess rules, and especially if you uh, like uh, had a meeting with a king before, you should know that it's impossible in chess to put your own king in check, yeah? Or you can't move your king to the square which is attacked by your opponent. So that's why I have several questions. So in this position, I see that it's not a problem at all if white castles, for instance, at the king side. And I just want to ask you about castling to the king side for black. Is it possible uh, to castle to castle here, Tara? What do you think? So I would go with a no, because if the king goes to g1, I would see that the bishop is would be aiming at the king and the king can never put himself in danger on purpose so that's why if you click on the black king you can see that one of the black king's options is not f7 it's not f7 because the bishop can't the king can't purposely put him in danger so if that rule applies then the king also can't castle to the king's side but given that the king still can castle to the queen side, because that's totally illegal and it works out. Yeah, of course. So I still can try to castle, but you see, computer doesn't let me to do this. So in this position, black can only castle to the queen side. No choice. Yeah. 
Okay, then also want to explain something to you. As you can see, the black bishop also is controlling this diagonal. So let's see if white can castle. Uh, when you castle a long castle to the queen side, the king jumps over this square and finally gets to c1. What do you think? Uh, is the black bishop attacking one of these squares? Like uh, c1 or d1? What do you think? So the black bishop is not attacking c1 or d1. But yeah. I see that the black bishop is controlling b1 which is why we can't castle and if you click on the white king you can see that the king does not have the ability to castle to the queen side because hmm. if it lands on that square then the oh wait i'm sorry i think i mess up the logic here i actually do think that white can castle because when the king moves two squares it doesn't pass through one of the squares the bishop is controlling and it does not land on a square that the bishop is aiming at so i would say yeah the king can castle yeah you're right so over b1 gonna jump the white rook and it's not a problem at all if b1 is controlled or even if the white rook would be attacked you still can castle yeah it's only important for you when you castle that these two squares shouldn't be controlled by pieces of your opponent yeah if you castle to the king side it would be f1 and g1 both of the squares shouldn't be controlled i want to uh, give one more example in the next position so you see i I changed it a little I put more pieces on the chessboard and now you see two white bishops one is controlling this diagonal and an important square for us which is f8 another one is controlling c8 so now let's discuss if uh, black in this position can castle. For white, I'm, I'm going to hide the king at the king side, so short castling. And now, Tara, let's discuss. Can black castle to the king side or black can't? Um, so here, the bishop is aiming at the square f8, and if the king tries to castle, it would be passing through the square f8. So I would say no, black cannot castle on the king's side due to the bishop. Yeah, so as you remember, as we said before, both of the squares shouldn't be attacked by pieces of your opponent, yeah? So the king, when it wants to castle, gonna jump over f8, but f8 is under the bishop's attack. So sorry, no short castling. Let's now discuss if black can castle to the queen side, a long castling. So what do you think? Here, the bishop on... G4 is aiming at the square C8. So if the king tries to castle, it would be landing on the square C8, and that would be a square that's endangered. So no, the king can't castle. It can't castle on the king's side due to the bishop on A3, and it can't castle to the queen side due to the other bishops. So both of the bishops are stopping our king from castling. Yeah, I agree. So unfortunately, black in this position can't castle at all. Yeah, but white can castle. So I castle to the king side. But from the previous position, you should keep in mind that this light square bishop that black has is not a problem for our castling to the queen side. Yeah, because the king not going to get to b1 or it's not going to jump over the square. So white can castle to the both sides uh queen side and king side but black unfortunately because of this white bishops for now can't castle yeah maybe for instance if black plays f5 yeah and if we're not gonna check the king and just like move the bishop away yeah so next move black castles to the queen side yeah because now c8 is not controlled by the bishop anymore so um in this position, if you attack the bishop and it moves away, now you can castle, but only to the queen side, a long castling. Right, that's correct. So, how about we take a minute to go over the five rules that we learned? And yeah. even better, I'll ask all of you at home to tell me what the five rules are. So, if you need a minute, you can go back to... Uh, 
previous section in the video and revise what all of the five rules are. And when you're ready, you can come back and tell me what the five rules are. So viewers at home, what are the five rules? Let's help a little, maybe. So I think this position could help. Pay attention to the white king and think if uh, there is a possibility to castle for white. So, so did you say that if the king is not on the starting square, you can't castle? If you did, then great. That's correct. So that's the first rule. Okay. Can you tell me what the second rule is? Hmm. I think I know. Oh, did I hear you say you can't castle if a piece is in the way? Nice, good job. Okay, let's go to the next one. Hmm, okay, but so I need move. to make a move, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, okay, viewers at home, what is the third rule? Yep, That's it's check. that if the king is in check, you can't castle. Yeah, okay, of course. Okay, come to the next one. Okay. So Okay, what is the fourth rule? Yeah, that's right. The king can castle if it lands on a square that's being that's being uh controlled. And what is the fifth rule? One more. I think it's something about this bishop. Did you say that the king can't castle if it travels through check? If you did, nice job. Yeah, so, so I hope that all these rules uh, were useful for you and you will keep in mind these little uh, advices from us about castling. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something from this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video to others. I'll see you on my next video. Bye. Bye.